My name is Jean Ah King. I am a professional English tutor and the writing liaison to the master's program at Goodwin University. And I've made this video to cover common writing mistakes for the online students, as well as for any student who needs a little extra help. In this video, I'm going to cover how to fix run-on sentences, sentence fragments, inconsistent verb tense, and how to eliminate wordiness from your sentences. First, I'm going to talk about run-on sentences. A run-on sentence is when two independent clauses are joined improperly. An independent clause is a complete sentence. Here are some examples of run-on sentences. The food truck sold grilled cheese sandwiches. I wish they also sold turkey clubs. The first clause is, the food truck sold grilled cheese sandwiches. The second clause is, I wish they also sold turkey clubs. So you can see that these two clauses are two separate complete sentences that have been joined in one sentence without the proper punctuation. Another example of a run-on sentence is a comma splice. That is when two independent clauses are joined by a comma. The food truck sold grilled cheese sandwiches, comma, I wish they also sold turkey clubs. Another example of a run-on sentence is when a transitional expression appears in the middle of a sentence but without the correct punctuation. The food truck sold grilled cheese sandwiches, comma, however, I wish they also sold turkey clubs. How to fix them? There is more than one way to correct a run-on sentence. The first is to separate the independent clauses into two sentences. The second is to use correct punctuation to join the clauses. One way is to use a period. The food truck sold grilled cheese sandwiches, period. I wish they also sold turkey clubs. In this sentence, we have separated the two clauses or the two complete sentences into two separate sentences by using a period. The second way is to use a semicolon. The food truck sold grilled cheese sandwiches, semicolon. I wish they also sold turkey clubs, period. And the third is to use a comma plus a conjunction. Conjunction includes words such as and, but, or, yeah. The food truck sold grilled cheese sandwiches, comma, but I wish they sold turkey clubs. And a fourth way is to use a semicolon to separate the two independent clauses and a comma following the transitional expression. The food truck sold grilled cheese sandwiches, semicolon, however, comma, I wish they also sold turkey clubs. And this is how you would fix the problem of the transitional expression seen from the last slide. Sentence fragments. A sentence fragment is a string of words that does not form a complete sentence. A necessary component of the sentence is missing. Some examples of sentence fragments and how to fix them. Was not useful for the organization. That is a sentence fragment that is missing its subject. What was not useful for the organization? When you ask that, you can see that the subject has not been included in the sentence. The correct way to write the sentence is to include a subject. The new business model was not useful for the organization. The new business model is the subject. Another example of a sentence fragment is the professors who were using peer-reviewed research articles that contributed to the body of knowledge in their fields, which was public health. In this sentence fragment, the essential verb is missing. What were the professors doing? The professors who are using peer-reviewed research articles that contributed to the body of knowledge in their field improved their knowledge of public health. So if you were to look at the sentence as the professors improved their knowledge of public health, you can see that the professors improved, that's what they were doing. The subject plus the verb, the professors improved. In the example of the fragment, the verb improved was missing. Inconsistent verb tense. Choose the specific tense to be used in the essay and then coordinate all the verbs with it. For example, if you choose to write in the past tense, stick with the past tense throughout the paper. An example of a short paragraph that has inconsistent verb tense. For my research project, I first selected the subject of interest, but now I discovered that I have to limit it because I realized that I will never be able to cover it in 25 pages. Nevertheless, I am going ahead. I prepared a list of a working bibliography and now I am in the process of preparing a preliminary outline. In this paragraph, there are three different tenses that are being used. The past tense, present tense, and the future tense. Selected, discovered, prepared are in the past. Have, realized, am are in the present tense. Will, never be able is in the future. 
The way you would rewrite this sentence so that all the verbs are consistent. For my research project, I first selected the subject of interest. Then I discovered that I had to limit it because I realized that I would never be able to cover it in 25 pages. Nevertheless, I went ahead and prepared a list of a working bibliography. And now, I am in the process of preparing a preliminary outline. One thing to note is the last part of the sentence that begins, and now I am in the process of preparing a preliminary outline. The verb am is in the present tense. It is inconsistent with the other verbs in this paragraph. All those verbs are in the past tense. The reason why it's okay to have am in the present tense is because there is the word now, which indicates the present time. So you would write the sentence, I am, because the word now says we are in the present. If you are going to make a shift in verb tenses, there must be a distinct reason for doing so. And words that indicate time are the clearest way to do that. Words like now, which says it's the present, or yesterday, which indicates that you're talking about the past, or tomorrow, which indicates the future, can all indicate a shift in verb tense. So you should decide on the tense that you want to use for your paper. In this case, the past tense was used throughout this whole paragraph, and you should stick to it unless you have a very clear reason for switching. Eliminating wordiness. There are a number of different ways to eliminate wordiness in your sentences. One of the ways is to omit the filler phrases it is, there is, and there are at the beginning of sentences. These often delay the sentence's true subject and verb. An example of a wordy sentence. It is expensive to upgrade computer systems. The way you would revise that is by writing, upgrading computer systems is expensive. A second way is to change is or was when they occur alone to a strong verb. Example, a new fire curtain is necessary for the stage. The way you would rewrite that is the stage needs a new fire curtain. The verb needs is a much stronger verb than is. A third way is to combine two closely related short sentences by omitting part of one. Note, this is not the same as creating a run-on sentence. An example, the director is concerned about problems. Typical problems may occur with lighting, sound, and props. The way you could rewrite that is, the director is concerned about typical problems with lighting, sound, and props. The editing process. You can apply what you've learned about run-on sentences, sentence fragments, inconsistent verb tense, and wordiness during the editing process. Spend time working through the sentences, words, and the grammar, and correct any errors that you may find. Finally, I have included links to web resources that provide more information and more examples of these writing issues. You can find the links in the description of the video.